you strengthen your bones to withstand physical damage? What were the worst forms of exercising the Japanese death penalty? And did the role of a sword tester really exist, or is it just part of anime fiction? Well, we'll be answering these questions and so much more in today's video, where we take a look at the Hell's Paradise anime. And make sure to stick around to the end of the video where we'll have a recurring segment called Dr. Death Notes, where I certify all of Gabimaro's victims so far. Now, for anyone who's not caught up with the Hell's Paradise anime, spoiler warning ahead. That being said, if you're ready, let's begin. <laughs> So yeah, the neck is made up of roughly 26 muscles, four major blood vessels, the spinal column, as well as the spinal cord. Now, cutting through all those layers took several hours when I worked as an ENT doctor, so I can't imagine the amount of power that would be required to do it in one blow. <laughs> So, beheading really seems like an inefficient way of executing someone. For it to work successfully, you'd need the combination of a talented swordsman, an extremely sharp blade, and enough force to be able to cut someone's head off with one swing. And really, it's this last point that made methods like beheading via guillotine far more successful. But this didn't stop the Japanese from experimenting with other forms, which we'll come on to talk about a bit later. Yes, so burning at the stake would in fact be the punishment for arsonists, and as described, it would be an extremely painful death. Imagine that your skin would begin to melt and bubble up, and the meat attached to your bone would begin to contract a bit like a steak would on a frying pan. Really, the only saving grace is that eventually the fire would burn your nerve fibres, meaning that you'd ultimately be able to experience no further pain. However, you'd likely be dead at this point anyway. Yeah, so I've seen many people survive house fires, but they end up really unwell when they get brought through to the accident and emergency department. And the types of things we have to think about treating is suffocation via the inhalation of carbon monoxide. Now, the reason that this is dangerous is carbon monoxide binds to your haemoglobin and prevents you from carrying oxygen around the body. And so the way that we treat this is with high concentrations of oxygen. And what this does is it displaces the carbon monoxide from your haemoglobin, allowing you to once again carry oxygen around your body. Other things you need to consider is whether people have been poisoned by the inhalation of toxic fumes. And this really varies depending on the substance that's being burnt. And of course, you may well also see thermal burns around the mouth and the throat from the inhalation of very hot gases. And it's all of these factors combined that make it really difficult to treat such patients. Yeah, so it's pretty shocking to think that somebody thought of these methods of execution. But dismemberment was often the punishment for adultery or treason, and it has a long history of practice, with different empires changing the methods by which they would dismember their victims, with some being torn apart by cows or horses, whilst others were being sliced to pieces by elephants or even pulled apart by two trees. And the gruesome aspect to this method is that victims' joints would often dislocate before they were finally torn off, and this wouldn't lead to an instant death. In fact, many of the victims would end up suffering in pain for several hours before finally dying of their wounds. Oh. 
So it looks like Gabi Maru was able to draw on his shinobi or otherwise known as ninja training skills to be able to withstand these forms of execution. Now, very little is known about ninja or shinobi training, but I'd imagine that it would be comparable to that of Shaolin Temple monks training, which looks at developing some pretty superhuman abilities. One example of such a feat is known as the Diamond Finger, where monks are able to basically puncture a hole through bark of wood just with one blow of their index finger. Other examples include the Iron Shirt or the Iron Head. Now, these techniques involve exposing the body to trauma on a daily basis, with the hope that this will build resistance and strengthen your bones and skin so that you'd almost become immune to trauma in the future. My advice as a doctor is that for the untrained, I wouldn't be trying something like this. Okay, so this form of execution seems a little bit wasteful of oil when it has a similar effect to being burnt at the stake. In fact, rather than using hot oil, in Britain during the medieval times, they would often execute people by boiling them to death in a pot of hot water. Remember, hot water at a temperature as low as 50 degrees is sufficient enough to burn your skin. So oil being poured over you at 360 degrees would likely melt the skin and soft tissues off of your bones. <laughs> I like how Gamimaru is getting fed up with all of these different execution methods, but there's quite a few that they haven't shown yet, which were quite commonly used at the time. Now, these would include things like being hung or being stoned to death. In some cases, people were buried alive, and in others, they were tied up in a woven carpet and thrown into the river to drown. Gabimara is just lucky that he hasn't been subjected to any of those. Yes, so the concept of being a sword tester is in fact true, and the Yamada family themselves are actually real. In fact, they're quite a famous family for their contribution to developing a sword tester's techniques. And what this would have involved back in the bygone era is actually testing the sword out on the bodies of deceased criminals. Believe it or not, but books were created by the famed Yamada family, cataloguing the various ways that you could cut up a human body to help test your sword. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that this part of the story isn't in fact accurate, as you can't create sound without intact vocal cords. Even if by chance the executioner hadn't cut through the vocal cords, you still can't create sound without having a set of lungs attached to your vocal cords. So really, if your head's not attached to your body, there's no way that you could really continue speaking. On the other hand, a question that I often get asked is how long can a head survive after being detached from the human body? And really, we're likely looking at anywhere between one to three seconds as the blood begins to leave your brain. So you may be able to see your body Body before losing consciousness. <laughs> yeah, so I found this really interesting to see how the anime dealt with the psychological impact of being an executioner. I remember watching a Vice video on this topic a few years ago where they interviewed an executioner who stated that even until this day, he's still able to see the faces of his victims. Bizarrely, however, despite the gruesome nature of some of the executions, in the interview he stated that the job became almost an, a normal thing for him. In fact, he would often get upset when his job went through quiet periods. Isn't the human psyche such a fascinating and crazy thing? Huh? Oh, 
Oh gosh, okay, so they need to cut down the numbers of criminals that they're taking on this quest, which means that we're gonna have an all-out battle royale. So it sounds as though it's gonna draw on my death certification skills. So if you're ready for a quick fire round, let's begin. Oh god, it looks like he's done a total laryngectomy there, where he's ripped out his throat and the surrounding blood vessels. Now, it's unlikely that you'd be able to survive this kind of injury, so I think we're going to put as cause of death, death through exsanguination. <laughs> Oh, okay, so trauma to the back of his neck, which is likely going to break his neck and damage his underlying spinal cord. I think I'd also have to consider whether he sustained a laceration to his oesophagus as we see him bring up this blood from his mouth. However, after some deliberation, I think I'll put his cause of death as spinal transection and neurogenic shock. <laughs> Oh god, two further laryngectomies, and this would lead to massive blood loss and asphyxiation. Remember to always guard your throat if you find yourself in a fight. It's probably one of the most vulnerable points on the body, where you've got not only your circulation at risk, but also your breathing apparatus. So for these two guys, once again, I think we're going to have to put the cause of death as exsanguination, or death through blood loss. Okay, so finally we see some penetrating abdominal trauma, some facial trauma, and then Gabimaru penetrates his hand through into this guy's abdominal aorta, the biggest blood vessel in the body. And what that means is that you're likely going to bleed to death in a matter of seconds. So for this final guy, once again, we're going to have death through exsanguination from aortic dissection. Okay guys, that's all we have time for today. Now if you're free just now, why not check out one of these two videos? Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks.